Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to analyze another poem in your Oliver syllabus and that is The Big Match by Yasmin Gunaratna. Talking about Yasmin Gunaratna, she is first of all a Sri Lankan poet, a short story writer and also an essayist. She was educated at the University of Ceylon which we now call the University of Peradeniya and later on at the Cambridge University. And she holds a personal chair in English and works as a professor of the Macquarie University. So she's well informed in the fields of creative writing as well as literary studies. Now talking about the big match, the poem, you might think at the first glance that this is about the supposedly friendly cricket encounters between top-notch schools in Colombo, right? Uh, but actually it's something completely different. For those who lived in 1980s, the incident of Black July brings terrifying memories, right? They know what I'm talking about. And it became one of the most ruthless events that led to many complications in the social, economic and political context of Sri Lanka. This poem is basically about that incident and its impact on people. So you might wonder, what is Black July? Now this happened in 1983, that is why we have 1983 in the title itself. Uh, this is the time the conflicts between the LTTE and the government forces were going on. So one fateful day, some 13 soldiers were killed by the LTTE and certain people from certain parties decided, okay, it's best that we bring these bodies to Colombo, which was a stupid decision to begin with. And clashes escalated when their bodies were brought to Colombo, actually. Mobs made of single extremists began attacking the Tamils in Colombo to avenge the deaths of the soldiers. And this became a huge disaster, leaving a big black mark in the history of Sri Lanka. Now let's watch a short video clip. It'll help you understand the depth and the extent of the disaster caused by the event of Black July. Let's wish that something like that will never happen again, not only in Sri Lanka, but elsewhere in the world. Right, with that note, now let's begin analyzing the first stanza. First, let's read it together. Glimpsing the headlines in the newspapers, tourists cuddle for cover, cancel their options on rooms with weeds of temple and holy mountain. Flashpoint in paradise, racial pot boils over. And even the gone away boy who had hoped to find lost roots, lost lovers, lost talent even out among the palms, makes timely return giving thanks that Toronto is quite romantic enough for his purposes. Right, this is the part we are going to analyze. The poem begins with a comment on newspaper headlines. If you can notice here, of course Black July gave a lot of negative publicity to the country, right? Some of media organizations were sensationalizing the tragedy, uh, publicizing what happened and making the international community aware of the injustice that's happening to the Tamils is one thing that is acceptable. But sensationalizing the tragedy to get more publicity for the news agency is something we can't accept, right? So this is what some media organizations did during the tragedy. Uh, this can be seen in the fourth line which goes like, flashpoint in paradise and racial pot boils over. These are newspaper headlines which are very sensational in nature. You can also see a paradox here in the phrase flashpoint in paradise. 
Now, I will explain what a paradox is in a little bit. First, first of all, let's look at the word flashpoint. What is a flashpoint? Flashpoint could be a place, an event or a time at which violence or hostility, hostility flares up. Right? Uh, now, paradise is a place opposite to a flashpoint. It's a total opposite. Right? It's very peaceful. It's very tranquil. There's no violence. Now, a paradox is when you put opposite ideas together to create a meaning, a certain meaning. Like for example, you put together flashpoint and paradise together. Normally, which cannot that cannot happen, but it actually has uh, a meaning to it. It makes sense, right? Uh, as you know, Sri Lanka is often called an island paradise. It's very beautiful. It's very, it used to be very peaceful, right? So this means that it used to be very peaceful before violence erupted as in Black, Black July. So there was a flashpoint, a sudden flash point in paradise. And you can also see that the headlines are a bit dramatic and somewhat exaggerated. Right? The dramatic and exaggerated nature of these headlines shows how certain media organizations sensationalize the tragedy. And the writer is highlighting this aspect to criticize these organizations uh, of the time who sought advantage over the situation. So when the tourists see these news articles, the headlines, they run for cover, they run for safety. They cancel their options or plans to visit the Temple of Truth Relic or places like Sri Father or the Holy Mountain. And the word scuttle in the second line, tourists scuttle for cover, is associated with little animals like rabbits and rats. To scuttle is to move very quickly with small and short steps, especially when the animal is frightened. So it creates a visual image of tourists hurrying for cover. And it adds a bit of humor as well. Notice that we have a consonance in the phrase scuttle for cover cancer. The repeated cur sounds. There's a difference between consonants and alliteration, of course. Alliteration is when you begin words, begin words with the same sounds. But in this case, we see that scuttle doesn't begin with a cur sound, right? It begins with an S sound. So in other two words, of course, we see that it, they begin with cur sounds. When we look at these three words together, we can say that there's consonants, right? Uh, because consonant sounds are repeated in these words and they don't start with the cur sounds, but the cur sounds are there in the middle, right? Uh, this is actually an auditory device a technique and that adds to the visual image to show how panic stricken the tourists became to read the news. That shows how panic stricken they were to read the news. Suddenly they started uh, going for cover. And again their behavior is a result of sensationalizing the tragedy. Instead of helping to settle the situation, what certain media organizations did was to fan the flames to say the least. Right? Great. It's not great. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Next, there's a mention of a gone away boy. Who is this gone away boy? And even the gone away boy who hoped to find lost roots, lost lovers, lost talent even out among the palms, makes timely return giving thanks to that Toronto is quite romantic enough for his purposes. So, okay, what's going on here? You know that as a result of the clashes between the LTTE and the government forces, many people in the affected areas fled the country, right? They emigrated to countries like Canada. Now, Toronto is actually a major city in Canada where the highest concentration of immigrants can be seen. So sometimes they revisit the country, Sri Lanka, to meet their relatives and spend time together. Uh, right. So the gone away boy is someone who emigrated and settled in a country like Canada. We also call them expatriates or diaspora. You may be familiar with these terms, especially the diaspora, because they used to often use this term in the media to talk about the conflicts, etc. Now, the two words, the expatriate and diaspora, refer to a group of people who spread from their original country to other countries. For example, from Sri Lanka to Canada. And when they do, they create a group in that country that is called a diaspora. For example, we have the Tamil diaspora, the Sinhala diaspora and many other types of diasporas in different countries. Right, 
and the behavior of the diaspora adds a bit of humor to the poem because he makes timely return giving thanks that Toronto is quite traumatic enough for his purposes. Right, so they come in search of lost roots to rediscover their identities as Sri Lankans, to reconnect with the culture, but then they run away thinking that okay, Toronto is romantic enough for their discoveries and purposes or whatnot. Immediately they abandon their mission to discover or reconnect with the country of their origin. Right? And the writer is somewhat sarcastic about the diaspora because of this behavior. Now, sarcasm is a technical uh, device, it is a technique, right? This means to mock someone, to disapprove the way someone acts. Okay, so we can say that the writer doesn't approve the actions of the diaspora. Right, I titled the second stanza as educated masses versus corrupted politicians. And why did I select this topic? Let's read it and see. Powerless this time to shelter or to share, we strive to be objective, try to trace the match that lit this sacrificial fire, the steps by which we reach this ravaged place. We talk of 48 and 56, of freedom and the treacherous politics of language. See, the first sparks of this hate fanned into flame in 1958, yet find no comfort in our neat solution, no calm abstraction and no absolution. Right, as you can see, the word we in the second line refers to educated masses or people like the poet herself. Uh, they basically try to look at the issue objectively and find the root cause for these clashes and thereby find a, a solution, a sustainable solution. However, they are powerless to do so because their opinions are not valued or given any attention, uh, mainly by uh, people who are in power. And I'll explain how we came to this conclusion in a little while. Uh, now I think this is the perfect time to talk about the meaning of the word match as it is in the third line, right? So the match that lit this sacrificial fire, which means the root cause of all this carnage, all this murder. What is the root cause? That is the match, right? Uh, match actually has two meanings here. Uh, when a word has two meanings with the same pronunciation, you know that we call it a pun, right? and match therefore is a pun and one meaning is the cricket match that we call the big match between dominant schools and you know very elite schools in Colombo and the second meaning is the match stick which we use to light things up or set things on fire right that is the second meaning so you can see that there are two meanings and because of these two meanings the word match functions as a metaphor right so how can we interpret this met metaphor? Uh, if we talk about the big match, it has this very competitive nature. It also happens between dominant or elite parties, schools. In a way, it is like a power struggle between two groups. And in this case, it's like between the LTTE and the government, right? And some people try to generalize this by saying it represents a conflict between Sinhalese and Tamils. But I think it is not that accurate because not all Tamils or not all Sinhalese took part in it. Okay, now let's talk about the second meaning, the matchstick. This metaphor is actually somewhat violent because it basically represents the carnage or the killing caused by the Black July. So you can simply say that while the metaphor of the match indicates the power struggle between the LTTE and government, it also signifies the carnage and destruction caused by the Black July. Right, and then there's also the mention of 48 and 56. Now, as you know, we gained independence from the British in 1948, so that is important. And in 1956, the government passed something called the Singhala Only Act. Right, you may, some of them uh, might have heard but uh, let's talk about this both these events are actually treated as victorious moments for the majority of Sinhalese because that's a sign of gaining in independence freedom from the British rule etc uh, of course there are were political reasons as well that is why the poet calls it treacherous politics of language treacherous politics of language treacherous means deceitful right then what is politics of language this is actually a theory, politics of language. I'm not going to talk about the nitty-gritties of the theoretical implications and whatnot. 
uh, simply put it is how language is used as a tool to gain power by various politicians right they use language as a tool to gain power now the best example is the sinhala only act now according to the poet this act is a result of such corrupted political measures that is why she says treacherous politics of language and why is it corrupted why is it a corrupted measure because the minority of tamils suffered the outcomes of this act like many tamils couldn't communicate in sinhala and as a result many of them couldn't even find jobs right uh, a major island wide riot occurred in 1958 against the sinhala only act that is why we have 58 in the next line now these incidents actually fueled the ethnic conflict in the country and especially the black july that occurred in 1983 now the last two lines are yet find no comfort in our need solution no come abstraction and no absolution right now abstraction and absolution uh, they refer to the quality of dealing with ideas basically rather than events right uh, this is the quality of dealing with ideas rather than events so if they are talking about black july they are talking about uh, what actually led what actually caused this incident rather than uh, the event itself okay now it is an academic approach actually to solve issues that is a productive measure a way of solving issues these two terms indicate how the academics try to solve the matter that occurred in in the country but corrupted politicians didn't pay heed at them or what they had to say so this ends the part 1 of our analysis stay tuned for part 2 in which we'll, we will cover the rest of the poem So if you are new to this channel please make sure to subscribe and like this video so you get more and more informative content in the future. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and take care folks.